A couple of years ago, when I spent some time filming with the late Steve Irwin, I realised that the passion, the enthusiasm, the excited love of his subject, Australian wildlife, none of it was an act. When the cameras stopped rolling, Steve didn't. No wonder his love affair with the Australian landscape and the wondrous creatures that inhabit it spread his fame well beyond these shores. I suppose, given his exploits, there was always a chance that we could have lost him, but to me, he always seemed indestructible, which, of course, is why the death of the man they call the Croc Hunter has come as such a shock at home and around the world. G'day, I'm Steve Irwin, and these are highly venomous sea crates. It's hard to believe he's gone. Steve Irwin was the world's most fearless wildlife presenter. Sometimes he seemed so reckless we worried for his safety. But always he survived. No, 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 no. get out of here. Get out. Being bitten, being peed on. He was even molested by an amorous orangutan. Have you been lucky? Yeah, very lucky. I'm still alive, mate. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was thinking. Yeah, oh, crikey. I've been grabbed by crocs, pulled back down into the water. I've had black mambas nearly clip me on the ear. Boom slang nearly take me thumb out. Mate, I've had more, more good luck than I could poke a stick at. But this week, for Steve Irwin, the world's best-known Australian, luck ran out. It shocked us all that his life would be taken by a relatively docile creature, a stingray. Experts are saying that he was just too close when the ray lashed out. <laughs> Getting close was very much the Irwin style. The closer, the better. I'm taking you, the audience, right in there with me. So as you're either sitting in your chair like this going, my, my goodness, or you're on, you know, going like this, watching the telly. So rather than the David Attenborough one step backwards, you yeah. prefer to be... Oh, 20 right steps forward. I want you in there with me, Charlie, mate. Oh, you're coming in with me. Well, this is the infamous Graham. So, I mean, this guy hits harder than a ton of bricks. <laughs> He's a good boy. Like everyone, I believe that Steve was indestructible. I'd be safe if I just stuck close to him. Anyway, how can you fear a man-eater with the innocuous name of Graham? Want to come over here, Charles? No. <laughs> yeah, no, you... Mate, there's no way he'll get between. Uh, yeah, well, right. yeah, exactly. <laughs> I feel he's looking at me. He know. is, mate. You can be sure of that. He's looking right at you. Trev, he wait, 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 wait. <laughs> just take Charlie, mate. Yep. <laughs> I'm gone. You're in growling. We're right. Just duck down. Duck down. I joined Steve in his natural habitat, performing for the crowd at his family's Australia Zoo on Queensland's Sunshine Coast. Right, you'd have no idea of knowing where he is. In fact, where is he? People love crocodiles, and crocodiles love people. Like a bull, there he is! This was Steve's peculiar way of educating the public, showing them what not to do in crocodile country. I don't think there has been a wildlife television presenter like you in, no. in the short history of this art form. No, I don't think and so. I wonder why it is. <laughs> I don't know, mate. You know what? I'm really lucky. All I've got to do is be me. I don't have to act. I don't have to bung anything on. I just got to be me and, 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 just, and people love it, you know? Like, they're really being educated about wildlife and, and yet they're scratching their head going, is that guy crazy? Yeah. <laughs> it seems to work. <laughs> And work it did up until this week. He's going wild and he's taking us with him. With an estimated 500 million viewers across the world, Steve's TV show made him a global celebrity. I'm guessing that's an alligator. Good guess. Fated by talk shows everywhere. You're trying to kill me and take my show. Oh, she's peeing on you. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. How do you handle the adulation from the public? I mean, what's a day on the streets of LA like for you now? Um, turmoil, mate. You know, I nearly caused car accidents. Police escorts, bodyguards, crikey, it's phenomenal in America. Phenomenal. It's just, I'm a rock star. You are not like <laughs> other people. I see myself on telly, mate, and um, I laugh at myself, you know, because I think I'm a bit of is a knucklehead. Is that you? Is that me? It is me, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think I'm any different on the telly or right here. Yeah. 
I no, really everybody don't. says you're the same. Yeah, I, I can't. And you know, what you're giving me now, yeah, is you. I think so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It all began in the backwaters of far north Queensland, where young Steve trapped rogue crocodiles for the family zoo. There's a good boy. As he manhandled the man eaters, the precocious young croc hunter captured his exploits on home video. Here we are back at the Queensland Reptile and Fauna Park with two crocodiles. Woo, look at this! And as he grew, not much changed. He simply became a bigger version of the same enthusiastic kid with the same excitable delivery. It's body, it's thicker than my arm. I can't stop, mate. I'm just, I'm on fire. I wake up in the morning and I'm on fire. I just can't do enough. It drives me crazy that I've got to go to sleep. You know, can't I film something at night? And you don't drink coffee. No. Nah. You don't drink alcohol. You nah. don't smoke. No. Nah. No. Nah. You're just on a yeah. totally well, I'm natural a, high. No, I do adrenaline. All right. Yeah, yeah no, I can't. I, a big you know, adrenaline addict. Oh, a big time. Absolutely. When I do a crocodile demonstration, is if, if that crocodile is not putting a good hit on me, I'm down. When a crocodile strikes so hard and fast that it clips me knee, I'm up. Ah! Oh, Steve, be careful. Steve's not so fearless offsider, Terry, was also his wife. Get a stick, get a stick. They first met at one of his crocodile shows while Terry was holidaying down under. And from the start, there was this animal attraction. My jaw was on the ground. I couldn't believe this guy. And I thought, I've got to meet him. Then he walked over to the feed bucket and went to grab another food item out of the bucket. And as he bent over, I went, hmm, oh, I've really got to get to know this man. guy. It's... <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I was just doing my routine crocodile demos. I looked into the crowd and I've gone, have a look at this Sheila. She's just beautiful. Next thing, the crocodile's trying to kill me. So, oh, I better concentrate on what I'm doing. And I kept watching her, watching her. Sure enough, she stayed back. Um, we started talking about some really hot wildlife issues. And I thought, wow, I can't believe I've found someone that has this passion for wildlife. The idea was to live trap the croc before a poacher shot it. Nature took its course. And just months later, Terry and Steve were married. Their honeymoon was also their very first television show. Hey, just be very, very careful. Woo! Yes. Get right into it, baby. Get right into it. I'm really scared. That's OK. I'm looking at this 10-foot crocodile. I'm fresh out of Oregon, and my husband's telling me to leap upon her head. So, of course, I did. Right, OK. Drop back, drop back. OK, I'm back. Oh, ouch. In situations like that, Sure, I kind of had to follow his lead, but now I, I have a little more know what's going on. I'm able to do it myself. I'm really proud of being able to work with him. What amazes me about Steve is the passion. Absolutely. Does he slow down at all? 24 <laughs> hours a day, seven days a week. This is what. It, but mind you, I've only known him for 10 years, so. <laughs> He is absolutely a wildlife warrior, and I think his passion and dedication is so wonderful for the world to see, because not only is he sincere about what he's doing for wildlife, but he's also a wonderful role model. You got her? Yeah. Terry wasn't the only American to fall for Steve Irwin. That's incredible. His first show was snapped up by the giant Discovery Network, and the Crock Hunter became one of the biggest media brands in the United States and the world all of which helps to explain the extraordinary outpouring of public grief this week across the globe. And with Steve's stardom, of course, came the commercials. Pentax, reliable gift. Then the merchandise. Look at this little beauty. Why, crikey. What do you Mine say? says smart things. Yeah, I don't know, but her pants come off. Oh, Look right. at this. Also, they do. <laughs> what are you saying? Yeah, well, mine don't. How come they made yours the pants be come careful, off? Be careful, Steve. Ooh. OK, I'll be careful, <laughs> too. <laughs> Steve and Terry became pop culture icons, and even their daughter, Bindi Here Sue, he was on, in on the one. act. Come on, big buddy. Yeah, come on, big fella, big. come on. Here he goes. When we showed come these on. scenes, there was no fuss. There's a good boy. There's a good boy. A couple now, of years later, when he did the same with his second child, baby Bob, 
there was a huge furore. Good boy, Bob. It was Steve's first instruction on the fickle nature of fame. It's not as dangerous as it looks. Not nah, for you, mate, anyway. nah, nah. But nah. you don't recommend that people do it. At oh, home. don't do what I. Don't <laughs> try this at home. Stop <laughs> <laughs> tickling me! A wonderful life for a kid growing up with the animals just as Steve had done. Oh, yeah, and in Bindi Sue, we could already see her dad's fearlessness and love of the camera. Um, did you know that snakes are not dangerous? In time, she would graduate to her own TV program. You want to give him a kiss? Oh, no, I don't. No. <laughs> he, he might is. catch something. <laughs> Bindi does. Oh. How are you doing? There's a good girl. Hey. Fatherhood has Beautiful. changed my life. I never thought there was something as beautiful in this world as my daughter. She is something else. She's a one-off. Yeah, she is, mate. She's a little perler. I'm thinking about keeping her. <laughs> <laughs> now, there are goanna species, a dwarf goanna species. Steve always believed we should all take a more hands-on approach to wildlife. He was convinced that familiarity is essential if we're to ensure the future of endangered species. Steve, how important is it for people to handle things? Oh, that's the ticket, mate. Yeah. That, I mean, oh, now that you've got that goanna on your shoulder, you'll be a goanna lover for the rest of your life. All <laughs> right, I'm hooked. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. You know, touching, using all of your senses is what crocodile hunter Steve Irwin, my family, my life is all about. It's actually feeling their claws in your shirt, watching their forked tongue lick your nose, and see him poo too. All right, yeah. Did you see yeah, that? Yeah. Oh, he he's shot a big poo out there. Now he's wiping his bottom on your shirt, and that's all a part of it, Charles. See, that's uh, changed your life, I've hasn't been it? I've shut mate? on by a goanna, I'll never be the same. <laughs> that's right, mate. That's it. And that's what we're all about. Of course, in my new movie, The Crocodile Hunter Collision Course... Steve Irwin was always bigger in America than at home. He was a star there, even before his TV shows were seen in Australia. America made him rich, but money and fame, he always insisted, were not ends in themselves. Much of what he made, he recycled into the best of causes, saving the world, buying up tracts of land, endangered animal habitat in Australia and overseas. What good is a fast car, a flash house and a gold plate of dunny to me? Absolutely no good at all. I've been put on this planet to protect wildlife and wilderness areas, which in essence is going to help humanity. I want to have the purest oceans, I want to be able to drink water straight out of that creek, I want to stop the ozone layer, I want to save the world. And you know money? Money's great. I can't get enough money. And you know what I'm going to do with it? I'm going to buy wilderness areas with it. Every single cent I get goes straight into conservation. And guess what, Charles? I don't give a rip whose money it is, mate. I'll use it and I'll spend it on buying land. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From Canada. From Canada? Yes. Whereabouts? Everybody loves you back there. They do? They do. In Canada? Oh, yeah. yeah. I must say that a day with Steve Irwin was like a month with any other celebrity. So it wasn't that hard to get to know him pretty well. And the truth about the Croc Hunter was that he was just a big kid with a passion for the planet. At heart, an animal nut who never grew up and didn't want to. I don't remember doing a story with anyone as unpredictable and uh, <laughs> foolhardy and dangerous as you. Good. And as much fun. Yeah, you had a bit of a good time, mate. Yeah, well, that's what life's about, isn't it? That's what life's about, mate, just getting out there, having fun. You know, following your passion and you're and just being enthusiastic, you know, that's the go. Crikey. That's yeah, crikey, have a look at this little beauty. <laughs>